Never really know just what you want With you I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palms Play with me like cats and a string Welcome to the Russian and the Freak Show Episode number 22 With Steve Ecker, the Freak You're gonna see him in just a second And Eva Ecker, me and welcome again to the episode number 22. The Russian and the Freak Show what is the about. Hell? Where did you pop up? Oh from? my god, she popped right here. Look at her. Special guest. It's, it's the show about how to maintain your equilibrium and function in, the, in a dysfunctional world as a freak family in business and life so that you can transform mm, chaotic think. complexity into your own. Oh, personal normalcy, and this is life. This is crazy. Now I won't be able well, to Well, I sit. had a specific chair where to put it. And instead of the two chairs, of course, what do you do? Let's stay on the center. Come on, Major. We're going to go. Our spots I always are over do here. the opposite. What the Our spots are over here. Maybe that's why. We Episode so number well. 22. This is how to win in business, family, and life, and relationships, and all that. And listen, if you're here and you're taking this to, to, to help you with your relationship advice, and you're coming to me, you have hit rock fucking bottom, I'll tell you that. But that's besides the point. <laughs> we're gonna keep rolling. So we're gonna talk about shit you need to hear, maybe not the things that you always wanna hear, but definitely shit that you need to hear. Real world situations, real world s stories, scenarios in, in business, in life. What's up, Mitch? What's up? You wanna be joining us for the show today? What you gonna be talking about? What you wanna talk about? Mm hmm. Race cars. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This is shit you need to hear. This is no bullshit. It's straightforward. It's telling it like it is how it should freaking be. And of course, as always, we are bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. We're going to dip into a bunch of different topics today. We're going to talk about combining. We talk about, we, we, people talk about work life balance all the time. And as we do tons of coaching and we do in the project, especially in the project and LTD, when we go, we go to visit companies and talk about their business and their teams. What it always comes down to is they think we're coming in there to help them with business. You might even be thinking that we're going to help you with business. And what it turns out to be that 80, 90% of what the fuck, what they fucking need, hold your ears, you hear me horrible words, is problems with their work life balance. Their shit in their personal life is bleeding over into their professional life, into their career, and it's making them make less money and be miserable and all this other stuff. So we're gonna talk about some ways to deal with that, especially if you are with your spouse or your partner or your freaking goat or whatever the hell you're into and you're living together and working together and having home offices and then having to deal with Zoom meetings and all that other shit and the noise and the chaos and the craziness without having it, uh, making it a bad situation. So we're gonna kind of dip into all that stuff and then how to actually navigate those waters, working on your personal development, Leveling yourself up. We're going to talk about the high performance summit that we were at this week, where the project was an official sponsor of it. We ran the morning workouts. We're going to go into all that. Yeah, I think Midji will tap into that, right? I know what you're going to talk about. Just the other day, what we what we did. But before we start, so yes, the high performance summit that we went it was, uh, uh, I mean, absolutely amazing, uh, amazing uh, uh, summit, amazing workshop. And uh, Steve and Ray was doing the uh, physical, the fitness part for all the participants. It, it was it was great. The workouts were early in the morning, right? See if you can top in uh, into the workouts and I'll tell people a little. In. Hold on, she's top in. I'm topping in. in. We're a bunch of topping in, motherfuckers top in. here. What do we top? What does top in mean? Just joining the conversation. Top in. Yeah, yeah, joining the conversation. In, so uh, the the most yeah. amazing workout. But the point is that. With, with you going to the next level, you need to start with your personal development. As Steve said, you it's all starting with you. 
Like he mentioned, okay, we go into different companies, we are helping your business, we helping your employees, but it all starts with you. So how can you start going to the next level? How can you show up in your life better is by investing in yourself. And what investing in yourself means is obviously reading good books, joining the rooms with people that are smarter than you. And that's what we did with the summit. And there was, that wasn't the first time that we did that. We've been doing this for a couple of years. If we're gonna a couple go- of years, been for a decade. Yeah, but I have no been, problem. I'm, a, I'm pretty good at joining. Time. I'm pretty good at jumping in a room with people that are smarter than me. I have no problem figuring out finding those rooms. Where's every room I go into? How about you? That people are smarter than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the workshop, right? The summit. Look. If you're gonna be special guest, you can't be talking like a mouse. You're gonna go okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, talk like the Midgey from the Breaking the Cycle. Midge. A special guest that always talks and have great points on the show, right? So uh, topic, going into and meeting other individuals with the rooms like the summit that like we just joined. But going back a few years ago, yes, it's been a decade. It's been such a long time. But the, when we started uh, with Peak Physique, when we, when we started as coaches, as trainers on the floor, we didn't know much. We didn't know much about leadership. We didn't know, know much about personal development. What we knew was just to coach, just to train, just to do a session with a person or do a group session. That was it. Our, our, our mindset was only a, about training someone, giving them a great workout, and that was it. But that wasn't enough to run a successful business. And I remember when we were, that it, 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 I remember this like today, we were trying to figure out the marketing campaigns, all the things to get us into the next level, but we were so confused. We were like literally heartbroken because we did not have the tools. We did not know what to do. So the point is to getting into these rooms I and doing them. The point is what? Personal development and getting into these rooms is that people that host the workshops or people, the influencers or people that have done it already, they have the tools for you to follow. And that's what we did. 15, 20 years ago, and we invested in coaching, and that's what the coach. That's that's when everything starts. That's when we when we changed uh, the idea. We learned the tools, how to operate our business. We learned the systems, and then based on what we've learned, we also created our own. So that's how it started. That's what means getting into this room. So we just wanted to motivate you today and inspire you to join people who can help you. I, I hear Steve is like, God, God. What are, what are we even talking about? That was a lot of stuff. fucking long-winded. So listen, if you are trying to figure out how to navigate these waters, how, to, how do you even work on yourself? How do you make decisions? A huge part of this workshop, of this summit, and any workshop and summit is, everyone always talks about vision. And it sounds really fucking cool, and everyone says your vision, you need a vision this, vision that. But what, what does that even fucking mean? And even they could try to break it down, what it is. But when it comes down to it, what is your vision? Your vision is really just the, the type of lifestyle you want to fucking live. That's what a vision is. What do you want your lifestyle to look like? A year from now, three years from now, five years from now, how far you want to go, what do you want that lifestyle to look like? And then reverse engineer that to today, to this freaking moment about what do I need to do right now? And if you're working together, with your spouse and you're at home and have a home office, how do we now take this what we want the lifestyle to look like and then have a cooperation and function to make it happen from right now, from this moment? That's what it's all about. What is the lifestyle you want to live? Because that's what should determine every opportunity you take. And when you go into these rooms of that, that very eloquently stated description <laughs> of the rooms or whatever the fuck that all just was, when you get into these rooms, are you going to make the most of it? I guarantee it. And I've spoken to a lot of people that left the summit because it's pretty fucking overwhelming. All this stuff going on, all this noise and music and lights and hundreds of people and interaction. It's just fast paced. It's just tons of information coming in. How do you make the most of it? You need to make the most of it. You need to go in there with open minded. You need to go in there thinking about just connecting. That's really the number one word is to connect when you're going into these moves. And be fucking bold and take risks 
Put yourself out there, stand out. Like that's what you need to do in these rooms. But the main thing is to freaking connect. And that goes with anything. What, you, how do you weaponize being in these rooms? You have to weaponize, you have to weaponize everything. And this is also part of travel. If you're traveling to an event, you have to weaponize that travel on when, when you're going there. So you're sitting in first class, you're paying that extra damn money, not just because they're gonna give you some nasty little sandwich and they're gonna take your jacket for you when you walk in and your seat's a little bit bigger, you have a little more leg room, that's all great. But the real purpose of first class, you should be trying to connect to that person next to you. You never know. You are always just one conversation away, one move away, one meeting away, one fucking flight away, one event away, one connection, one conversation, one fucking word, one thought, one fucking second away from that massive breakthrough so you could just explode. That's what you need to think about. That's what you need to approach personal development and just life in general. And it all tied together because you travel out to these events. You need to weaponize the travel. You need to weaponize the event. Make the most of it. So many people afterwards, they say they just felt like they didn't, they don't make the most of it because they're just overwhelmed. They don't know where to start. That's where to fucking start. And then how do you make that happen as a, you know, in a, a couple, in a relationship is look at what you want your lifestyle to look like, reverse engineer that, and then set some fucking boundaries and stick to the boundaries. Like if there's a time that it's supposed to be lights out and quiet on the set <laughs> at a certain time of night, it doesn't mean we run around and scream. We decide to start calling our, our, our friends over in some communist countries and start screaming in some foreign language where I think I'm getting invaded by the enemy. And I thought Russia invaded us last night at like 11 p.m. when I'm trying to go to sleep at 9, 9.30 so I can wake up at 4 a.m. Okay, let's stop. But I'm hearing all this kind of crazy, and it's, it, the voice sounds a little squeaky. It was, it was, we I were connecting to another was. planet. Huh? We were connecting, right? I wonder who it was. Oh my God, little mouse. Listen, were we connecting to someone else? That Tell us. That's a guilty look. Who are we connecting with? Um, our uncle. And who else? Our great grandma. Okay, but it, if you're, you listen, you're, when you're in a, when you have businesses at home and you have home offices and now one person is one thing. That's a one dynamic. Now, two people working home and two different home offices, which I, I've seen a lot of people, and I have someone actually at the summit. Actually, I just got off the phone with him right before this, this, this show right now. He was in the summit and asked a question on stage about how do you navigate those waters? Now we're working from home. We're starting our own business. Now, uh, it's not just me working from home. Now my wife is working from home. We're working together in the same type of business, both working from home. How do we do it? How do we go about it? And it starts with setting, well first, what's the lifestyle we wanna live? And then it comes down to, all right, on a surface level, on a daily level, on an operational level, what are the boundaries we need to set? What are the rules of engagement? What are the rules of the game? And that's what I wanna kinda of dip into a little bit today about the boundaries, about the rules. And we have signs on our doors, it has little sliders on it. And I send it out to all of our clients also. It says, one is do not disturb. One says, please knock. One says, in a meeting. In a meeting means don't even nothing. Don't even come by. Like, I have to, I'm have, i focused in a meeting. And the other one is out of the office. And we talked about this before, and I'm a little confused, because yours seems to No, I knew it, that he's going to talk into it, that mine says out of the office. It says out of the office 24 hours a day. And I'll be in there, I'll look in the window, and I'll see you chit-chatting. I'll see you, like, playing with a hamster or some shit. But it says you're out of the office, so please explain. This is funny. Out of the office 24 hours a day. Even in the office, out of the office, I don't even get it. I knew it, and he's going to talk into it. This is pretty cool. But talking if you guys need... Talking. You're talking into it. You're yeah. talking. If you guys need talking. information about these signs please let us know but this is let me explain you how we do it as a as a freak family because he was saying how you how, how are you gonna really operate with two people working in the same business or maybe two people wanting to travel and you have kids we took our kids to this event we took our kids that are old enough that they could hang out and not only the kids. We, we took, took the dogs, dog. we took the hamsters, we took the fucking turtle. We, we took them all. Everybody, okay? Everybody is doing personal development because even the turtle needs to know. But you think more. the lifestyle you want to live, the lifestyle you want to live is you want to travel, you want to do this and that. You have to figure it out, set the boundaries, set the rules of the game. But here's the thing about boundaries and standards and everything. All right, let's talk about boundaries. You have to set the boundaries, then you have to live the boundaries, then you can enforce the boundaries. Now, if you start, even the standards, let's say in your business, in your life, you set the standard, set the standard, live the standard, enforce the standard. You cannot enforce the standard if you're not living the standard. You can't live the standard if you didn't first set the standard. And the same goes for boundaries. 
So yes, I can enforce those fucking boundaries because I'm living those boundaries and I'm we have agreement upon adult agreement on set boundaries. So you have to enforce it. Like there last night. Mm. We couldn't talk. <laughs> Or we even, were even things like from the top of the roof. Like here's another boundary. Like you have a home office. You have a fucking kitchen table. All right, that's not gonna work. You have a home office. You have a kitchen table. We're gonna be sitting there. Do you want to sit there when we're sitting at dinner, Midge? And we're you're talking about race cars or something, or tennis or something. And then we start talking about and it happens. We start talking about like money or bank accounts or business or sales. Do you want to hear that shit at the dinner table? No, it's boring. Do you hear it sometimes? Yes. Sometimes you do. And then we, you catch it though. Like, oh, copy that. Or sometimes I'll say, hey, I don't want to talk about this. I want to talk about freaking race cars. You don't even know anything about race cars. But every time you say you want to talk, you say you want to talk about race cars. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. It's like your go-to thing. So we should be talking about race cars at dinner or what we did or what we want to do or some cool shit or what the plans are for fun for the weekend or something. For or the entire family. Whatever it is. Yeah. But you'll and, Or goats. Yes, there's a goat right yes. behind us. And there's actually a goat farm right down the street in the new compound here, the new, the, the new freak fortress. So you need to set those boundaries and you'll slip into it. We slip into it and we'll start talking about it. But the kids will say, hey, we want to talk about race cars. We want to talk about goats. What are you talking about? They want to hear this shit. Like it's just stress and anxiety and it's also just poisonous. It goes into other areas and other think about like bleeds into each other. There's a work, there's an office, and we'll cut it off. Like, Listen, you want to talk about that? Let's schedule a time. Let's put it on the calendar. And we'll go into the office to talk freaking business. With the door closed, where it says, in a meeting on the door, so there's no interruption, and it's just boundaries all around. That energy, that energy you're bringing out into the kitchen is now going to fuck up your digestion. Like, seriously, that's how screwed up it is. Those type of conversations with some anxiety or stress or money or whatever, bullshit, it's gonna even it's gonna affect you even physically just because you're thinking about it now you're not even affect, talking the way you should be talking it is infectious it is a bad type of energy that you're just putting out into the universe or that space of the house so each area of the house has its own energy its own part of the universe of the freak universe that is meant and designed for and they're all freaking boundaries and there's boundaries on everything boundaries on reading time boundaries on sleep time lights out time the rule is supposed to be. Just so you know, if you want to have to help someone boundaries, all right? We say, all right, lights out is at 9.30. Let's pay attention. You two should hear it. Take a pen and a notepad and take freaking notes okay. to you. No. Cool, cool pen. <laughs> so lights out are at 9.30, which means you start your end of night routine at about 9. So you start doing the wind down thing at 9, whatever it is. Brush your teeth, take a shower, do some meditation, do some journaling. It's like intentional nighttime routine for that last half hour. There's no screens. There's no eating there's no games there's no eating there's no tv there's no eating during that time exactly because you'll eat three times right before it's time to go sleep it's like under the covers under the covers i'm hungry you just said it's only for you two me and tyson and then they have a first of all now they have a summer break so it's they totally on a different schedule but we record, we want them to know that we're going to sleep earlier. So we allow them to stay up and do whatever they need to but do. But here's the rule. If you know lights out are at 930, no matter how late you want to stay up, they, they, have, they have their own bedtime whenever they want, even during school. They go to sleep whenever the hell they want. That's on them. You want to get a lot of sleep, a little sleep, that's on you. You want to go to school and now there's no school, you can step as late as you want. You're going to get up early enough. You're going to get your workouts in. You're going to get your reading in. You're going to get your workouts in. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, what a great workout. So proud. How many pounds yeah. did you lift in each hand in chest press? What was Ten. it? 10. and how many reps? 25. That was, and what about deadlifts? How many deadlifts did you do? 100. 100 and what weight? 18 pounds. Amazing job. Whole hour of heavy lifting done. All right, so here's the way to set boundaries. Once you set the rules, you have to have guidelines. You have to have the, you can't just say, all right, here's the boundary, we're going to sleep at 930. No. Anyone can stay up. You want to stay up late and you want to run around and don't want to wake up on time because you want to break your discipline and sleep in. That's on you. That ain't going to be for me. But if you, you can make those agreements. You better be running around the house after at by 9.31 until freaking 4 a.m. like a 
fucking ninja. Like there better not be a sound, not that slant, like getting your, your stuff out and <laughs> slamming the doors and, <laughs> Look at this oh, and this slamming the door. Like listen to, listen to me open this door and close it. This is, when, if I'm staying up late and you want to go to sleep on time and for some reason I'm staying up late, listen to me open and close the door. See, let's listen. Everyone silence. Did you hear that? You don't hear it. But if you're not paying attention and you're not respecting the boundaries, this is what you do. Broke, yeah, just broke the fucking door. Uh, by the way, you have this to respect is respect the boundaries. Just a one percent of the behavior of the project instructor. So multiply this by hundred. Now imagine what's happening over there. But you you have them for a reason because you you have to you you set them. That's gonna all those boundaries are to go in accordance. It all goes back to the lifestyle you want to live. We want to live this lifestyle. That means we need this much amount of sleep, which gives us this amount of energy. And regeneration so we can attack the day to get to this lifestyle. It all leads to that lifestyle you want to have. In order to have that lifestyle, you need to... Oh, go. we have a visitor. In Come order visitor. in order to live that lifestyle, you need to have those boundaries. We just have another visitor to this show. This is a little freak. Oh, Poppy. Dragon. Dragon, you are on the show. Say woof woof. All right, Good so... Boy. Boundaries. Dogs need boundaries. Everyone needs freaking boundaries, but you have to enforce them. You have to respect them, but also set the guidelines, set the rules of the game, set the rules of engagement. What's allowed? What's not allowed? What type of conversations happen where and when and how and how you approach them, how you separate the personal and the professional. Listen, I don't want a work-life balance. I don't want my personal. Fuck, fuck that. I don't want to be balanced. I want to be freak overboard in all areas. That's not fucking balanced. I want to be so fucking imbalanced that it's, it's just crazy. But you can still have work-life synergy, work-life satisfaction, even if you have offices in the same house, even in the same businesses, maybe even different businesses, but you still have the same office in the same house. Or maybe only one person has an office at home, someone works out. So sometimes that person that usually normally works out is in the house and not used to it. And they're just walking in and out of the office like that shit can't fly. And it just takes an adult conversation, not a personal conversation, because you need to be able to separate those two and say, this is how... It needs, we need to do it like this, this, and this. Here's the thing. Here's the rules. Here's why. Because it all leads to the lifestyle we want to freaking live. If you don't know what that is, you need to figure out what is the lifestyle you want to freaking live. Yes. And for those of you who yes. work together you, and you guys have some questions to ask in regards to exactly how we did it, how we set it up, and um, how, how our system works, maybe something, uh, something you get out of it, our ideas, and then blend it in with yours. And that, that will help you. But why don't we just uh, go back for a second for into the summit when we were saying in the beginning, getting into the rooms, because a lot of times I think it didn't hit me for a long, long time when we first started doing the workshops and going into the workshops, the idea of, of, of being somebody better with you in the room, not only for the knowledge, but for the connections, for, for, paying the high ticket price. So actually going, what we did when we first started doing these workshops, we spent more money than we were making. And a lot of people always go for the lowest ticket price. But if you pay the high ticket, you're going to get the high ticket outcome. You're going to get the high outcome from a high ticket price. That's how it goes. The same like when you buy more, more expensive clothes or shoes, it's a higher quality, right? That's what it's all about. So try to think how by how can you improve your life? What you can do today to go to the next level? Maybe you've been really resisting or being scared of investing. It should be a decision that it's very scary for you. Because a lot of times people will look and they wanted to make the decision. They, they were willing to, but then they start convincing themselves that, Oh, it's not going to work. I've done so many workshops, so many things. Why well, should believe that this will work? Right? You should always take the risk because if you don't, you will never know what the outcome is. And how can we also like, what would you suggest for people that actually did the workshop and feel overwhelmed? Because I've heard this from some of my clients that that was such a, such a huge um, amount of information and it always is it always is so because think about it for what 16 18 18 hours you're sitting straight and listening and absorbing 
All right, so the first, the first, the actual, like, first easy surface level answer is, right, you have all your notes, weaponize your travel. You're traveling there, probably on a plane or whatever. One second. You're traveling there on a plane or whatever, weaponize your travel. Review your notes while you're going there. Get a highlighter, a red mark, a red, red pen. Circle the top two, three, four, five things that came out of it. Prioritize that stuff. Organize it. Start plugging stuff into your calendar. Start plugging stuff into your checklist and organizing the, the information you have. But really let the top th- two to three things stand out. Five things stand out. Put them in order. The top five things. Eliminate all the rest for now. Look at the top five. Order of priority. What's the lowest hanging fruit? What's going to get the biggest impact? And focus on that one thing. Get it done. Then go to number two, number three. Once you're done with those five, all right, check. Now let's go back to the notes. What else did I highlight? What else did I write? Start plugging shit into the calendar. And this all gets done on your trip back if you're on a plane or whatever. If you're driving, whatever, obviously a different story, but you get the point. Weaponize your time. Listen, if you're traveling somewhere, you're going to a work, a business meeting, or even traveling for vacation, and it's a fucking Tuesday afternoon, Thursday afternoon, and you're flying, you have to drive to the airport, you have to wait for your plane to take off, then there's a delay, then you sit on the plane, then you have to wait for them to do the thing, to get off the plane, then you have to get your luggage on a Thursday. You would never be doing that stuff on a Thursday. You'd be working, making shit happen. So you have to make sure you're making the most of that time. You're not on a plane to go watch some fucking Netflix or Beavis and Butthead reruns or some stupid movie in the middle of the day you would never be doing on a Thursday. You should be making the most of it. There's even more focus in time because you don't have all the distractions around you. You're stuck on this on this metal tube with a bunch of people and you're trying to connect to the person next to you, but there's probably some fat snobs sitting next to you. You're not even going to have to, you're not going to be talking to them because they don't want to hear any positive shit half the time, most of the people, but you're going to try. And then the rest of the time, you're going to be focused on your damn work. Go through, all right, what are my action steps? What am I going to do? What's it going to take to make this happen? What is my vision? What is the lifestyle I want to have? Start creating that. The amount of shit, I've probably created more shit for business on flights than everything else combined and more effective stuff. Definitely made hundreds and hundreds of thousands, probably millions of dollars just on flights, just from ideas and writing stuff down and organizing stuff and plugging stuff in here and there on just flights. So that's the first thing. Take those first few things, attack it, schedule them out, put them on the calendar, put them on your checklist for what you're doing, planning out the rest of the week. What's up, Mitch? I need to go eat something. Okay, you go. And then there's another one. Like Each of us operates differently, right? And when I... That's for sure. I knew. That's for sure. I know what's coming. That's for sure. And obviously, we have those magic times when you guys work out and do these things. When, when For me, when I work out I, I and I don't listen to the music necessarily, my head is so clear and I come up with ideas. All of us have magic time. But during the workshop, you might also feel that magic time because idea of someone will spark another idea in you. But brain is funny. For me, I have to write it down, a quick note, my idea and i always do this at the end of my book when i take notes if i use a computer write it down i make these uh ideas like that ball sparkle in your head that turn on the light and you're like wow i want to do something but the thing is that you need to implement that so i have my ideas from this workshop immediately but then like steve said review highlight and do the priority but you have to implement because if you don't that's a waste of your time, waste of your money. And then talking about a person that might be on a plane and might be, might be slab, like he said. But the point is that you start the conversation and you can inspire this person because you never know. Like we just did the other day with Ivanka. It's too bad that she left the room because we we went just yesterday. We went food shopping. And it was a huge order. We spent a lot of money. We have Tyson's birthday coming up and we have visitors from New York here. So we had to buy a lot of food. And the person mentioned, I never spent that much money. And they were having conversation, the person that was helping us with the, with the, uh, with parking the food. And he said, I'm broke. And I was listening to this young man, what he was saying as I was paying and he helped us with the card. He actually took the, the three cars to our car and I asked him, how old are you? I was asking him the question, what are you doing? What is your passion? And, and, and I said, why are you saying that you are broke? Why are you thinking this way? So we started a conversation and from this conversation, I, I, I told them, you need to live with your purpose. What is your purpose? What is your goal? What do you like to do? Kind of living to, the, to, 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 to answer some of these questions. 
And he said to me at the end, he said, I never felt inspired. And somebody told me so many good things in a few minutes. I gave him some points on books. You know, inspiration, you never know. But I guess you have to come from that point that you can inspire people, even whatever you do. You don't need to be a life coach to inspire. You can fix cars and you can still inspire a person because this is your purpose and this is your mission. This is what you love to do. So you can spread the love, love your love for what you do on others. And then the second person, they left, that kid said, yeah, sure. Thanks, mom. No, I don't think so. He was very genuine, a young kid, polite. And I, I because it, it kind of it bothered me. I'm thinking this young man... If he doesn't have someone in his family to show him the way and to not think this way, because the necessary, this person that was uh, the, the cashier at the store, she didn't really, she, she, she goes like, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you is a great answer, but where is the leadership? Where is the push? Where is the questioning? Like it wasn't there. So I'm thinking if this young man is not going to have any advice, he's not going to, get into any person or any room that will spark something in him, he might have his whole life like this. You never know. I mean, we need to inspire. Yes? So I'm the second, inspire you. So you asked this. the question, so as I was still continuing to answer, oh, them, but about what uh, and how it ties into what this show is about. This is the Russian and the Free. This is about families, about working together, about collaboration within the family, within a relationship. So the other thing for these workshops is if you're here and your your spouse, partner, whatever is here, you're both here and you're both two sitting on the couch watching Netflix motherfuckers, right? And then you decide to go and read a book. You decide to go to the gym and work out. You decide to do this, that, now go to these workshops, get in the rooms and pop up, whatever. What was it? Pop out? Pop up? What were you saying? Pop in? <laughs> I don't even I don't know. know. So, sop in? Top I don't in. know. Top in. Top in. You're going to go top into all these rooms, whatever the fuck that means. You're going to go top into these rooms. And you keep going here and here. Once this line, this difference, gets more than like a 45 degree angle, and that's already pushing it, that person down here is going to keep trying to come up, and no matter what they do, they're going to slide down that 45 degree angle. You need to take them along for the ride with you. Bring them to these workshops. And, and if you if you were there you, and you were in the project, our project graduates that are there, a good amount of them had their wives or spouses with them. A, t- a ton of them did. And that's what they, you need to do. That's how you end up implementing stuff. That's how you come up with, you go to workshop with someone else that's your, your partner, your spouse, maybe in business or just in life, and you both hear what's going on from, from the thing, you start, you're making, you're connecting all kinds of people, you both hear different things, you hear stuff or hear the same stuff, together on the ride home, weaponizing your travel, connecting with the person next to you, might be the person you fucking went there with, you're gonna come up with a whole nother new set of ideas that neither one of you had alone, no one at the workshop had on stage or any of the people you connected with had, neither one of you had separately, but due to all the inputs, you're going to output to some new type of thing up here. That's the real, where the real fucking power, power and magic comes from these kind of things. But you have to collaborate and take these people along for the ride in your house, in your home. You Listen, you can't go and get, you're not going to, it's just not going to work if you're going to get lean and ripped and jacked and all this other stuff and your partner's a fucking slob. It's just not going to work. It does. It's not conducive. No one's meant to be a fucking slob in the first place. So you can't level up without leveling up person with you or else it's just not going to work. You end up speaking two different fucking languages and it's sayonara. You're fucking done. So that's the really the, the key thing is taking the other people along for the ride. Bring them to the workshops. And if someone is so anti-personal development, someone that you're with is so anti-self-development, so anti-self-discipline, so anti-getting better, so anti-connecting with each other more, so anti-connecting with other people more, so anti-fucking building a lifestyle that you claim you want to have, and they're anti-this, guess what? They need to be fucking anti-you is what they need to be. <laughs> but this, okay, this goes for the spouse, but also goes for the employees too. Like, think about it. For anyone, any kind of partner in any area of life. Like, like if you have a team that you want to level up and you want to go to the next level, you need to take them along for the ride. You need to invest in their in their self-development, right? That's So this would go for another show. We could spend here hours and hours of talking. So, so pop yourself up in the rooms or wherever it. it was. Top into the rooms. Take people along for the ride. Implement the stuff you're doing. Weaponize your travel. Weaponize the opportunities. You Put yourself in those opportunities and exploit those opportunities. Don't let those opportunities wait. You don't want to be going somewhere and on the way home, 
be like, fuck, I really didn't take the, the most advantage of that opportunity as I could. Like, jump on that shit. Be fucking bold. Make bold moves. Stand up. Stand the fuck out. Take some big risks. Put yourself out there. Be the fucking one. That's what you need to think about. Be the fucking one. Let everyone else be the ones hiding in the shadows. Step the fuck up. That's what you need to think about it. But take the people along for the ride together. Or else you're going to be doing that shit solo. And nothing's going to work solo. So make that shit happen. Finish them off. By the way, I like your t-shirt. You're wearing energy. He's wearing energy and fire today. I think purposely for the show, the fire was up front, that red. And he the, the energy is blue. So if you guys like this... This type of uh, freak code style clothing. Check the freak code apparel here on Instagram. I'm wearing the dress. We have all family clothing, matching clothing for the entire family with discipline, you energy, top up confidence, in clothing. action. Top up on the clothing. Let me speak. Action and freak. Being your own freak self. This has been the Rush and the Freak episode number 22. If you have any questions, comments, put them down below. Let's talk about it. want to hear what you have to say about the personal development, going along for the ride together, and making shit happen together, collaborating as a couple, as a family, in a relationship, at home, and the boundaries that you're setting was a huge part we talk about. So what are the boundaries you set? How do you do it? Let us know. You are fucking awesome. You are fucking awesome. And you are fucking awesome. No excuses, we guys. We will talk to you later. No excuses. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed, think you're something out of my nightmares, standing right there. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, then will you get bored of killing me? Silhouettes of you are like a taunt. Never really notice what you want. With you, I don't ever feel calm. I can feel the sweat inside my palms. Play with me like cats and a string.